Hello again, this is Founder Lay Rune, and we are going to cover the Actions tab. Now, the Actions tab is where most of your time will be spent if you're playing in the 5th edition rule set um, with this style of character sheet. So what's happening here is that anything I have equipped in my inventory should be displayed here. So if I go back to my inventory, I have a crossbow and I have my battle axe. My shield and my armor is already equipped, and that would be reflected on the main tab in this combat calculator that I showed early on in the system or in this tutorial. And it shows that my armor class is 18, and that's based off the shield and the armor plus the base. Now, I'm not able to take advantage of the dex bonus because I'm wearing heavy armor, and I will be at disadvantage when I try to be stealthy. So if I come over to my ability scores or my skills and the GM wants me to roll stealth, and I double click on it, it'll actually roll at disadvantage automatically. So it, it already knows that I'm my goose is cooked on trying to be quiet. And plus I'm not proficient with it, so it's not really my forte. So that is something that you have to be aware of. And then, of course, you have ammunition. So this character starts with 20 crossbow bolts. I went ahead and typed in 20 because that's the starting amount. Uh, the battle axe is something that you will have to finagle with if you want to show or have it set up for two-handed use. So what I'm going to do is kind of illustrate how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and create another iteration or another copy of this battle axe. So what I'm going to do is change the, um, I'm going to go into edit mode on the bottom right corner of the character sheet. I'm going to click on the blue uh, weapon, looks like a sword, and that will make myself another new line. Now this bag means that it's carried, but I want to make sure that it's equipped, so I make sure that shirt's on there. I go ahead and exit the edit mode by clicking on the edit list again. And then I'm going to pop up the properties for the battle axe and the properties for the, the new entry. So the reason I'm doing this is because this weapon has versatile properties. There are six of them in the 5th edition rule set that I'm aware of. You have the spear quarterstaff, and the longsword. You have the battle axe, the trident, and the warhammer. Those are your six main versatile weapons. You can use them one-handedly or two-handedly. So in this case, I'm going to make the two-handed variation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drag the D10. So right now its default is D8. So I drag the D10. I take this word slashing, which is a damage type. And I add it to there. So then I'm just going to copy and paste this data. And then in the new weapon I just created, I'm going to put in parentheses two handed. So now, systematically, what I've done is I've created two variations of the same weapon. It's not going to be extra weight because I just added an entry, I didn't actually add an item. Now, let's just say, for example, you want to make this a magical variation. So, Let's just say your DM is nice and he awards you uh, a bonus on your battle axe. Or maybe you found your ancestral one or something like that. So I'm just going to notate it's plus one. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to put one for attack. and one for bonus damage. Another thing I have to put on here is a comma, magic. 
doesn't matter if there's a space, but you do need that comma. It needs to be lowercase. What that does is it allows you to get past resistances of creatures that are immune to normal weapons. Without that, the, the, that won't work. These weapons will be ineffective. So that is how you make a magical variation, and that is also how you make a two-handed variation for the same weapon. So that is basically how you handle weapons. Um, you can create your own on the fly. Some people will make a fist for their monk, or they might make an improvised weapon, or perhaps you need to make a, you know, like a, uh, some kind of special attack or something. That's one way to do it. Uh, so this is just a, a real rough draft on how this can be done. Well, if you wanted to add another effect, let's say this this not only does slashing damage, but it also does light. So I'm going to go ahead and, or maybe fire. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a four-sided, add the extra damage line. And when he swings the axe and it hits, it also has flame. So now in effect, I have a fire effect on top of regular damage. You notice I didn't adjust anything. I just added the die and just added the word fire. That's all you have to do. So now it's a plus one fire axe. So that's basically how you would deal with that. So the next step is I'm going to go to spell slots. And this is important that you understand how this works. So the first things first is I'm going to bring up my, my cleric. And in here is a list of what spells you get. So at third level, I get three cantrips. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the library. And I wanted to show you I have the 5e effects coding for class features and for spells. So right now I'm going to be working on spells. So I'm going to go to the spells banner. And I'm not going to be using the typical spells at I'm going to be using Rob Tui's coding effects because they are a lot more complete, a lot more descriptive, and a lot more automated. So that is why I'm going to use those. If you don't have Rob Tui's effects coding pack, that's fine. You can just use the standard player's handbook variety. Uh, from this point out, I'm getting into more customization, but I am going to show you the right way to grab your spells and drag them over and how to set them up for casting later. So right now, I want to be able to illustrate that you can customize the sheets, but you don't have to. It's not a requirement. And actually, in the next video, I'm going to get into some, some real customization. So here is basically the spells list. I need to filter it so I only see the Rob 2E 5E effects coding spells. So that's a filter. So you need to learn how to filter groups. Um, this is a function of Fantasy Grounds that you should get familiar with on how to group things together, how to make them um, more suitable for viewing so you're not getting, uh, you know, eyesores and getting distracted. So now that I have it filtered, I'm going to go ahead and drag over just the spells from the zero level spells, which are the cantrips. So down below, I hit zero, or I can filter it to zero. And then the source. Which will be cleric. So now from here, I'm going to drag over my three cantrips. So I'm going to pick guidance. Now, nah, let's see. Sacred flame. Uh, Toll of the Dead, and Thaumaturgy. Not sure why those are doing that, so I need to re-drag those over. So again, I want uh, Thaumaturgy and Toll of the Dead already have that. So Sacred Flame, that's the one I want. So now I have an offensive spell, 
I have a utility spell, and then I have a cause and effect spell. So that kind of balances out your, your low-level spell casting. If I click on this magnifying glass, it will revert this to 13 for your DC challenge rating, which is right. It, it fit, focuses on um, your bonuses in that area for, for wisdom. So that's that. So that's how I picked my the spells here. Now, to make this a little simpler, I'm going to go to the War Domain, which is one of my features, and I'm going to pick all of the freebie spells that I get for this particular build. So I'm going to make a new group for the War Domain spells so they don't get mixed in with my daily. So I'm going to, these are always prepared. You still have to use spell slots, but I don't have to burn up how many I have prepared for the day. So I'm going to make a new group by clicking on Add Power. And I'm going to call this Domain Spells. Now, you don't have to do this, but this makes life a lot easier. So now I'm going to go to Unfilter This. So I don't want any filters. And when you learn to use the filters, it makes the game so much easier. And then I'm going to go ahead and leave it on Cleric. And I'm going to type Divine. That might not, e that might not even be a Cleric spell. So now I have to go ahead and unfilter even that. So now I have Divine word and divine favor so divine favor is a free spell so you have to remember that some of your domain spells might be from other sources or other books or even other classes so then i have shield of faith Magic weapon and spiritual weapon. So these are all the spells that I get for my freebies for my domain. And as I level up, I'll get more. But for right now, those are the four that I get for level three. So that takes care of my bonus spells. So when I pick my daily spells that I want to prepare for the day, I don't have to worry about those, and they'll be in a separate list. So now I'm going to go ahead and filter this to level one. And I'm going to go with Cleric. And now I'm going to pick my regular spell. So I want to make sure I'm not picking the same ones. But as a cleric, you can pretty much have any spells you want. You just can't prepare that many spells. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my top ones here. That's pretty good. And now I'm going to collapse the spells so that they don't, you know, they don't cause me grief. That way I have more room. So those are my first level spells. And now I'm going to go to second. So I'm going to filter to second level and do the same thing. So I want aid. Hold person, lesser restoration, locate object, prayer healing, silence, 
Now, I'm not going to pick Spiritual Weapon because I already have that in my group up there. I would, but I don't need to. So here... All right. So now all the spells are parsed, and they're in their respective area. And that's what I have. So I just did my domain spells, my cantrips, and any of the first and second level spells that I'd like to pick. Now, when you want to use your spells, you have to prepare them. So I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to get out of the edit mode. And right now I'm in standard mode. I need to switch it to preparation. So preparation allows you to select which spells you want to have handy for the day. So these spells in my bonus domain spells are basically just well, just that. They're separate. Uh, I don't have to prepare those. They still take spell slots, but I don't have to worry about you know those coming and going so much. And then if you want to know the formula for spell casting, you go back to your abilities and look at spell casting, and it will explain what you get, why you get them. So you can prepare a list of spells that are available for you to cast. So I got a whole big list. Uh, when you do so, you choose a number of spells equal to your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level with a minimum of one. So my modifier for this is three, and I'm level three. So that means first and second level spells, the most I can prepare is six max. So I'm going to prepare the ones I know that I'll use the most. So there's those. And then I'm going to do the same for these. There we go. So that's collapsed, that's collapsed. Okay, so now we have this spell casting thing. It's, it's a done deal. And we have everything memorized. So now when I switch over to standard or combat mode and actions, now only the spells that I have prepared are showing. Now when I use my spells up, like the, both the first and second level slots, these two will disappear. So if I end up using all my spell slots for the day, because we had a big combat, all that stuff will disappear. When the DM gives me a long rest, they will come back. So I'm in the rest area, and I'm going to hit long rest, and it resets the, the slots and brings the spells back. So that is basically how you build your character. That's a little bit of customization, but now I'm going to come back and add a lot more. So if you've got to this point in the lesson, then this is pretty much what you need. Uh, if you want to go further, go ahead and watch the next video because there's a lot more customization that can be done. So until next time, thank you. Bye-bye.